In this video, we're gonna do a law of cosines, and that actually should be, bad on me, should be 8.2, law of cosines. So in the last video, we did the law of sines. Now we're gonna do the law of cosines. So we're gonna be looking at solving triangles in which I have possibly three sides, or I have uh, two sides and the angle not opposite one of the sides. So in this case, I have B and C and then alpha, or I have A and C and then beta. Now notice when I'm using the law of sines that I have all three sides or I have side, angle, side. I have the angle between the two sides, but I don't have the angle opposite one of the sides. I can, if I'm solving for my angle, it is the same thing as B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2ABC. If I'm solving for one of the sides, then I would use one of this. So it depends on what I'm looking for, for when I'm using the law of sines, or excuse me, law of cosines. So the thing about triangles is that if you add up the two smaller sides, they always have to be larger than the largest side. So without even doing any work, I know that with A, there are no triangles, no triangles. And the reason that is, is because we have, if A is a smaller side and B is a smaller side, when I add these up, these had better be bigger than the, the largest side. So in this case, I added up three and four, which is seven, which means I have a straight line. I don't even have a triangle. Now let's take a look at one where I do have a triangle and I don't have all the sides. So for this one, I am going to be solving for the B and then once I solve for B, I, I go back and use the law of sines. You can use the law of cosines every time, but holy crap, is that a lot of work compared to the law of sines. So I'm going to first solve for B. B squared, so in other words, I'm going to do the square root. Normally I put the plus and minus on there in front of that square root, but it makes no sense here because we're not going negative measurement. So then it would be the a squared plus c squared minus 2ac, the cosine of beta. So b is equal to, in this case, I'm going to have 6.8 squared plus the 2.4 squared minus 2, the 6.8, 0 .8, and the 2.4, and then the cosine of 10.5. Make sure you are in degrees because my units are given to me in degrees. So I end up with B being uh, 4.46. And now once I have done that, I can use the law of sines. Using my law of sines, I'm going to be first solving for one of the angles. So I'll put my sine values in the numerators. So I'm gonna have the sine of four, uh, excuse me, 10.5 divided by that 4.46 is gonna be equal to, and we'll just start with the first angle. So we'll do the sine of alpha, and my A happens to be 6.8. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the sine, the sine of 10.5 multiply that by 6.8 and then divide by the 4.46 and I end up with the sine of alpha is equal to um, 0.2778 so I'm going to take the sine inverse of that do make sure that you are in degrees not radians and so my alpha is equal to the 16.13 and then all I have to do is find my gamma, doing or my uh, gamma by doing the subtractions, and so I have my gamma, gamma, is going to be equal to 180 minus that 16.3 degrees minus that 10.5 degrees, and so I get my gamma to be so 180 minus the 10.5 minus the 16.13 and I get a hundred and gamma is 153.37. Now let's just make sure this makes sense. My largest side is six or my largest side is actually not C. So take a look at this. My largest side is not C, but my largest angle seems to be C. So either I made a mistake here or there is no triangle and that could happen. What I mean by it could happen is that perhaps that the example here was junk. So 
sometimes they give us numbers that actually don't work out not actually a triangle and we don't know until we actually do this work it shouldn't happen it does happen occasionally but it doesn't happen very often the time in which we get junk information is when we have the ambiguous case which this should not have happened let's go ahead and take a look at d here where i've got all three of the sides and once again, I'm going to make sure that 9.3 plus 8.1 obviously is bigger than 12.2. That's cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the angle. It is in your best interest to find the angle of the largest side. So that means I'm going to find cosine of gamma. Now, if you remember our formulas, we've got multiple ways of writing it, but cosine gamma is going to be all the sides squared, a squared plus b squared minus c squared divided by 2ab. So it'll be a squared, oh, we'll make that, uh, we'll make this a. So we have 8.1 squared plus 9.3 squared minus 12.2 squared divided by 2a being 8.1 and b being 9.3. So I'm going to put this in my calculator, and I have 8.1 squared plus 9.3 squared minus the 12.2 squared. I'm going to get an answer, and then I'm going to divide it by uh, 2 multiplied by 8.1 multiplied by 9.3, and my answer is the cosine of gamma is going to be equal to 0 0.0216. Now remember, I should be chasing the largest angle. So I'm going to do the cosine inverse of that number, and I get my gamma to be 88.76 degrees. Now once I have one of the angles, I can then find the other angle by doing the law of sines. So to continue on with this, let me do that. I'm going to do the law of sines. I'm chasing angles, so I'm going to do my next largest angle, which should be B. So I have the, the sine, the sine, the sine of beta over my B, which is 9.3, is equal to the sine of 88.76 divided by the 12.2. So the sine of 88... 0.76 multiplied by the 9.3 and then divided by the 12.2 and I've got the sine of beta to be equal to 0.762 I'm going to go ahead and do the sine inverse of both sides and I've got beta to equal 49.65 degrees so now all I have to do to find my last um, angle is I know 180 minus that 88.76 minus the 49.65. This will give me the alpha. So 180 minus, I'm doing this in my calculator, 88.76 minus 49.65, and I get 41. So alpha is indeed the smallest angle, which is across from the smallest side, which is 41.59 degrees. So that's how you solve with the law of cosines. You almost always end up having to use the law of sines anyways. You don't have to. You can use the law of cosines, but it's way more cumbersome than using the law of sines. It's really up to you, though. Okay, so now we also have this Huron's formula, now that we know all of the sides. Once we know all of the sides, we can find the area of the triangle by using this formula, where S is the sum of all the sides divided by 2. So then the area can be found if you have all the sides as S, S minus A, S minus B, and S minus C. So if we're asked to find the area of a triangle and I have all three sides, then the first thing I want to do is find my S. So my S is going to be equal to 16 plus 9 plus 10, all divided by 2. So I'm going to my calculator out. I'm going to go ahead and add those, divide by 2, and I get 17.5. The area is equal to the square root of 17.5, 17.5 minus 16, 17.5 minus 9, 17.5 minus 10. I'm going to put that in my calculator and I'm going to get 
and I end up with A being 40.91 units, whatever the units are, squared. Same kind of thing here is I've got my, my all three sides, so we'll do this again. So my S is going to be equal to 124.8 plus 86.4 plus 154.2, all divided by 2. And I get this to be equal to 182.7. So the area again is going to be the square root of 182.7. 182.7 minus the 124.8. And then that's going to be multiplied by 182.7 minus 86.4. And then lastly, 182.7 minus the 154.2. Now I just want to say something here is that if any of these, if you're doing this all one step at a time, which is cool, do make note that if you end up with a negative here, you made a mistake on your S because these all should be positive numbers. Your S should be larger than any one individual side. If it's not, you made a mistake. Anyways, I'm going to put this in my calculator and my area is going to be equal to 5,388.2. I actually have units on this and this is in miles squared or square miles. Okay, so these have real life applications. So parallelogram has um, sides of length 16 and 10 units. The shorter diagonal is 12 units. Find the measure of the longer diagonal. So what we know with the parallel parallelogram is that these sides are parallel and then of course these sides are parallel. What they're telling us is the longer one is 16, the shorter one is 10, and then the diagonal, the shorter diagonal here, this happens to be 12 units. Now, you can see that I actually have all three sides. So what I need to do then is just find the area of this and then just multiply it by two. So the area of my parallelogram is gonna be two times my S, S minus A s minus b and then s minus c so again let's find my s my s is going to be 12 plus 10 plus 16 all divided by 2 so calculator 12 plus 10 plus 16 divide that answer by 2 and i get 19. so my area is going to be equal to 2 multiplied by 19 19 minus 10, 19 minus 16, and 19 minus 12. So my area for this parallelogram will be equal to 119.85 units squared. Okay, now let's take a look at this. A survey has taken the measurements shown below, find the distance across the lake. They're not asking me for the area, they're asking me for this distance right here. So I'm going to use the law of cosines, and I'm going to call that alpha, or excuse me, I'm going to call that A, I'm going to call this alpha, it doesn't matter what you call it, I'm just going to call it A. So we know that A is equal to the square root of the 800 squared plus the 900 squared minus 2 multiplied by 800 multiplied by 900 multiplied by the cosine of 70 degrees. So the length of my um, lake is equal to 978.51 feet. Uh, round into the nearest tenth, I guess it would be only 978.5 feet. And that's it. That's the law of cosines. So now that you've learned the law of sines, the law of cosines, Heron's formula, as well as the area using the sine formula, now you can, you can approach any triangle, and it doesn't have to be a right triangle.